guys welcome back in another episode of the starship updates it's been a long time since we waiting for the starship flight 5 but it's not happened since we haven't anticipated because the starship flight 5 has been stranded and grounded due to the some rules and regulation violations and the truth is a very very bitter than actual false is so the let's see in this video the what whatever the truth is there is and whatever the false there is but the i'm very angry for the faa that they are trying to the dragging the biggest competitor in the space field on their entire of their the tap i don't know whatever they are doing because this video would be an unedited unedited series means that the, we are not going to edit this video in a graphically or the infographically I would not put this any, any of the text in my video. You can see nowhere the text is floating. So this video would be uh, without text or and without the graphics. So you have to listen to me uh, only. And then I would literally tell you everything that why the SpaceX should do for the FAA. But the simultaneously the FAA should cooperate with the SpaceX. SpaceX has been done anything but the FAA is not a cooperating with the SpaceX. So the both thing is very complex. For, that's why we are still confusing what's happening over here. So that there in this video I will discuss only the two factors that the dragging their entire SpaceX back in there and set back them for the long time. So as we know that recently the congressman the Mr. Kelly and the Mr. Whitaker the representative of the FAA and uh, Kelly is the congressman. Uh, the both have uh, uh, conducted the interview, I guess that the meeting in a one room and that the meeting uh, went very well. And the congressman, the Kelly has been asked the, to the, the Whitaker for the any information regards to the Starship flight fire or regards to any rules and regulations compilations. So the, he said the compilations of the rules and regulation is exceeded by the SpaceX, not the not for the not by the us. Means that the FAA has been a not exceed the any process, but if like a SpaceX have exceed the process to the verify their the new modifications in their missions. That's called the real and true transparency because uh, every company should do like a SpaceX is doing because SpaceX is a very loyal and very sincere in this field. So the as per the SpaceX have a data, but they have exceed the process and the entire and expanded the rules and regulations. So that's why the FAA got a chance and got a point to let's take him take them back off because we know the once they have exceed their the challenges then the FAA would know oh guys this is a good point for us to get take a back of them so that's why this became just like a you just the uh, drip dip your the blood in a water and then that blood would be a sense and uh, like a realized by the the shark and the shark will be uh, like come on come towards you and just like Eaten you down, so just like a situation we have got here, the SpaceX is became the victim, and the FAA playing the protagonist role play. So the protagonist is a FAA. The Federal Aviation Administration has been a sitting on a top, but they have a nothing there. They should not be stopping the SpaceX for to launch their the cadence launch like a complete their cadence because the, their cadence and iterations the, like a, between the launch time and the manufacturing time is very shorter than the ever any company have actually because the space is trying kept trying to the maintain their pace they are not going to the outpacing so everything is on track uh at least even our the flight five vehicle has been ready on the pad that's actually the full stack uh, has been configured for to the taunting the SpaceX, I mean the taunting the FAA to the show. Yeah, we have already, but FAA are targeting us and they are backing off, backing us and like uh, dragging us back. They are not providing us the actual launch license. So we are ready, but where is the launch license? 
So the first you all have to understand what exactly has happened. I will cover only through two factors that upon we can actually understand the full of the story. The full story of the story we should not summarize in a deeply, but in this video we would know uh, very slightly about the, the story, just like about the two remain factors that really the violet everything. The first man, the first thing that the con like a representative of the FAA, the Whitker, the Mr. Whitker, have said the sonic booms is really became the biggest concern for the environmental safety or public safety. Public safety is not their inclusions in there, but the environmental concern actually. So the first thing that is the sonic boom that would be created by the booster while it descending back to the launch site for to the landing over the uh, mechanical arm that's called the chopstick, the Mekazila arm in a fancy name. So that's the mechanical arm would catch the booster in the mid air that entire the process haven't been done and never been done by the humanity, even any other company. So this thing is going to happen in this uh, mission. So due to this, the expansions of the uh, concerns and the uh, and information that has been provided by the SpaceX to the ensure everything before we go into the attempt the flight file because we don't have to the deal with the NA uh, like a criticize after the launch because if they haven't disclosed about the sonic booms that were created by the booster then the, in the future the spaces will really have a very bad time that's why the Travel like about like earlier to ensure everything that everything is going well or not. So the sonic booms is just the like compressed air is released at the one point so that the compressed air make the very highly boom sound. That's nothing else but that boom sound making the shock wave in our air, and that shock wave could travel across the, the meters away or kilometers away. But as they're traveling the most the kilometers away in a threshold of their the decay. Uh, of the decay of the like entire the discharge moment when they actually the travel across the uh, kilometer away so they actually could be the audible not the harmful for the any objects but when they release and when they release at the from the object like a booster if you if you can if we can assume this is a booster just like we have a a scene and we have also in a starship i mean the falcon 9 when the falcon 9 is descending back to the launch site so when it crossed down and got about i mean got down from the the speed of sound so it's the like transitioning into the sonic boom phase so that's called the sonic booms when the compressed air is completely released at the one point because of vehicle and the entire body of this uh, vehicle traveling the faster than the speed of sound so that's the making the biggest difference between the booster landing and the falcon 9 landing because the falcon 9 mass is not the very wide and not the very the bulky and the uh, like yeah bulky but the falcon 9 could produce the maximum amount of the sonic booms that could reach almost the 120 decibel above so in a normally the generally when the fighter jet provide, like produces the fast sonic booms that they could provide, produce the 120 or 150 made of the level the decibel sound but for the starship if you if you could make like you you would measure the booster descent like a sonic boom then that would be literally higher than any other vehicle has been created because the sonic boom exceed from the 150 to the 200 decibels of the levels. So that's making the concern because uh, the sonic booms actually becoming the very biggest problem for us. And then that's the holding us back. But here's the we got a twist. The my point is that the Falcon 9 is produces the, the like a uh, sonic booms at the for the uh, like a temporary moment. We know that the sonic booms, every sonic booms are not the leave uh, for the permanently. They don't sustain for the long time. They, they also could occur for the very short time so that the short time will be not expand uh, over. That will be not exceed. 
<clears throat> but that short time is also very dynamic and the dynamic phase that's why the like uh, throughout the launch pad there will be there will be everything is affected by the sonic booms but out of the entire the star base there will be not affect anything because uh, unless the the uv we will produce the 200 uh, decibel above of the sonic booms intensity so in, it doesn't intensify the entire sonic booms or uh, the sound and it could be audible for the bokajika village but they will not feel any the shock wave. They will feel only rumbles a, for the short time, and that rumbles will last for the only seconds. So here's the problem that comes that the FAA got a one reason. This is a reason. That's why they are they're dragging us back. The sonic bombs would create the 150 to 200 decibel of the intensity far intensified the sonic bombs of the label decibel means. They are showing the numbers of the sonic booms and the putting the entire rules and regulations. They are saying, okay, you guys are going to do it. Means the, everything will be conclusions as a very bad. So that's why we still got a stuck up here. We got a, like a trap into the FAA entire, the institute trap, whatever you call them, because I don't know, but we are lawyers. The SpaceX is a loyal, very loyal. They they don't want to do anything with the rules and regulations. They don't want to do the like violate the rules and regulations. But the sonic booms is becoming a very big the headache for us. So the sonic boom will be not uh, actually should not be actually the concern for us. And any vehicle produce this the sonic booms that will not last for the forever. Because the sonic booms will not leave the like a permanent damage to the any environment, they are naturally produced by the air compressions uh, uh, around the vehicle, so it should not be a problem for us. And let's see the another topic that the Whitaker has been discussed over there. The first uh, is done like a sonic boom that should not be a take by the space FAA for to this matter. Uh, but second thing is the the tank farm location. So the tank farm location, according to the Whitaker that they said, I mean, the, according to the FAA, they said, yeah, the tank farm of the entire thing uh, would affect the population because it has been the place near to the populations and the Bukachika villages. I don't know whatever they're saying, but tank farm location, it doesn't matter over here in this uh, entire the compilation of the rules and regulation. That's why they are not the proving and they are not the passing the paperwork uh, forward and they want to the sure the SpaceX should uh, like give the input in to this make a th things in the practically fact. But SpaceX said everything is away from the population. Everything is away from the peoples and there is a none of the violation has happened and occurred by the tank farm so as as you know the spaces have been removed the some the vertical tank farm integration and they have been uh, transformed the entire tank farm into horizontal position so the horizontal position is very good for the entire environment uh, vertical will be like a very messy it look it was a looking a very messy for us but now the vertical tank farm has been removed and they have swapped by the horizontal tank farm which is a good transitioning between the vertical to horizontal and they also got the the higher efficiency to the horizontal tank farm so the shock wave while the starship is launching uh, would not the damage anything so they will could they could travel freely uh, throughout the air and they could actually go away but they will not actually the harm to any of the uh, environmental so guys bye i will meet you later as soon as possible to you it's fine ah.